Hello everyone, Raccoon Formers here, and I am finally coming at you with a review. Unfortunately, my Studio Series B127 review is not ready yet. I do hope to have it ready soon, but I'm coming at you with a different kind of review today. I'm not reviewing a Transformer figure today, I'm reviewing something else. Today, I am taking a look at the periodic table of the Transformers t-shirt. This item is just what it sounds like. It's a t-shirt that's clearly an homage to the periodic table of the elements, but instead of having elements that you might learn about in school, like gold, silver, iron, or tungsten, they have different transformer characters. Isn't that cool? You know how the periodic table is split into different element types, and there's a little legend at the top of the table that explains which section is which? and the sections are kind of different colors, and the legend has the color and the element type to help you find where each element is and what each element is, you know? So like how they organized each element type by color, they organized each transformer type by color as well. Like, each transformer type is in its own section. Like there are Autobots, Decepticons, um, Dinobots, and Insecticons, and each transformer type has its own color. Like, Autobots are red, Decepticons are purple, Dinobots are green, and Insecticons are orange. And there's a little legend at the top of the table that explains exactly that. How cool is that? They also chose some really cool abbreviations to label each character with. Some good, some bad. But I'll go over that later on. But using letters to label each thing on the table is somewhat of a reference to the periodic table as well because they used letters to label each element on the periodic table. Isn't that a cool homage? Here's the order that I'll take a look at each section of the t-shirt in. The Autobots, the Dinobots, the Decepticons, and the Insecticons. So I'll start with the bots and end with the cons. Sound good? Then without further ado, let's get started by taking a look at the Autobot section. Autobots, transform and roll out. Alrighty, Transformer lovers, here we are with the first section of the periodic table of the Transformers t-shirt, the Autobot section. This section houses some of the coolest characters in the history of Transformers, so I am really excited to get started. So let's go ahead and do that. First up, we have O.P. Gee, who could that be, am I right? O.P. Hmm. Pause the video and play to check yourself. If you guessed Optimus Prime, you are correct. I mean, like I said before, you probably could have guessed that just by looking at it. And what other Transformer has the initials OP? Octopus Prime? Actually, that sounds dumb, but, <laughs> but yeah, that was just, that was obvious. It was, it was, you know? Next up, we have WJ. Hmm, who could this be? Let's see. I'll give you a few hints. He's good friends with Bulkhead in Transformers Prime. He's considered a wrecker in Transformers Prime. He's a medic in the game Transformers Earth Wars. And in the live action films, his nickname is Q. Who is it? Pause the video and play to check yourself. If you guessed Wheeljack, you are correct. Congratulations. It was probably obvious by looking at it because Wheeljack kind of has a signature look. All of the Transformers do. And I can't think of any other Transformers that have the initials WJ. So it was kind of obvious. But good job if you guessed it. Next up, beautiful people, we have Jay-Z. Who could this be? Hey, that rhymes. But Jay-Z, doesn't that kind of sound like a band or a rapper or something? Jay-Z, Jay-Z, that, that's kind of a tongue twister, <laughs> but I don't mind that. But let's see, hmm, who could this guy be? Hmm, I'll give you a few hints. He was the first Transformer to die in the live action films, and he's the only Transformer whose G1 vehicle mode is based off of an actual car. Pause the video and play to check yourself. If you guessed Jazz or Rooney or Jazz, you are correct. I mean, like I said before, it was probably very obvious because Jazz does have a signature look in G1. And the periodic table of the Transformers t-shirt has G1 characters on them. All the Transformer characters that are on this list are their G1 versions, not the live action versions, the G1 versions. So if you're a fan of G1, you probably would like this t-shirt. 
um, comment in the comment section below if you're a fan of G1. Like, G1 rocks or something, and G1, yeah, or something, I don't know. But I am a fan of Jazz's initials, Jay-Z. Doesn't that kind of sound like the name of a rapper or something? Like, I read this book called My Weird School, and in one of the books, they made up a singer whose name was Crazy. Not the thing that people call when people act all hyper or something. It, no, I mean like C-R-A-Z, you know? That's a pretty creative rapper name. And I feel like the letters J-Z kind of remind me of that. G1 obviously came out before that My Weird School book, so I'm wondering if when they wrote that My Weird School book, I'm wondering if that was a purposeful homage to Jazz from Transformers, naming that singer Crazy, because Jay-Z is Jazz's initials, so I'm wondering if that was a purposeful homage. Let me know in the comment section below if it is or not, or make your prediction. Is it or is it not, you know? Next up, we have P.R. This one might be a bit harder, and I don't really have any hints, but let's just think through this together. He looks a lot like a police bot. What police bots are there? Chase from Rescue Bots? No. Barricade? No, he's a Decepticon. Hmm. Ooh, I do have one hint. Um, he was in Transformers Animated, and he was voiced by Jeff Bennett. Pause the video and play to check yourself. If you guessed Prowl, you are correct. He probably was a bit harder than the rest, unless you're a huge Transformer geek, or just someone who knows a lot about Transformers. If you know a lot about Transformers, it was probably easy to guess that this was Prowl. But I honestly don't feel like PR is all that good of an abbreviation for him. I feel like maybe PL or PWL would have been a bit better, wouldn't you say? Next up, ladies and gents, we have IH. This is a better abbreviation, and this character is a lot more memorable than Prowl. Let's see, who could he be? Hmm. I'll give you a few hints. He was the weapon specialist of Optimus Prime's team from the first live action film. He was killed by Sentinel in Dark of the Moon, and he actually has a periodic table of the elements element in his name. Pause the video and play to check yourself. If you guessed Ironhide, then congratulations, Maboa. You are correct. And do you think what I said was true? Do you think Ironhide is more of a memorable Transformer character than Prowl is? I think so, but you might think differently, and that's perfectly fine. It's a free country. But here's why I say that Ironhide is more memorable than Prowl. Ironhide has been in three live-action films. Three. He's been in Transformers 1, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, and Transformers Dark of the Moon. But Prowl, on the other hand, hasn't appeared in even one live action film yet. None. Zero. Zilch. Nada. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that they're making a new live action film sometime next year. Maybe Prowl will make a debut in that film. That would be really, really cool, wouldn't you say? But try to see if you can find the periodic table element that I said was in Ironhide's name. Can you find it? It's literally in his name. Iron. Iron. Hide. I-R-O-N. Iron. That was a pretty creative joke, wouldn't you say? Let me know in the comment section below if you liked it. Next up, we have H-R. Hmm. That one's a little bit tricky. Who could it be? Hmm. I'll give you a few hints, because I obviously know who it is. He has a French accent in Transformers The Last Night. He's Studio Series 8604 in the Studio Series 86 line. Um, he became Rodimus Prime in the 1986 film, and he's really good when it comes to bullying. Who is it? Pause the video and play to check yourself. If you guessed my boy Hot Rod, you are correct. Um, this was a pretty good abbreviation. It was definitely better than PR, which was Prowl's abbreviation. I think I know what they're doing. I think they're putting the first letter and the last letter of each name. Or if a name has two letters or two words, they put the first letter of one word and the first letter of the next. Like Optimus Prime, they have O from Optimus and P from Prime. Wheeljack, they have W from Wheel and J from Jack. But for Jazz, they put JZ 
J is the first letter in jazz, and Z is the last letter. I really feel like they should have done something different with prop, but no need to go on about that. But since they put Hot Rod on here, I'm surprised that they didn't put Rodimus Prime. But I guess Rodimus Prime is the same character as Hot Rod, but if I had to choose, I would have preferred Rodimus Prime to be on here, because Rodimus Prime is the most up-to-date version of Hot Rod, because he became Rodimus Prime after he became Hot Rod. So I really feel like they should have put Rodimus Prime on here. But hey, not that big a deal. Here's what I meant when I said Hot Rod is really good when it comes to bullying. Cup bullied Hot Rod a lot in the 1986 film. Okay, he didn't outright bully him. He didn't steal his stuff or hurt him in any way, but he said some really mean and rude comments to Hot Rod in the 1986 film. Here are some clips from the movie that show exactly that. <laughs> Not bad for an old timer. Old timer? That's something you'll never be if you don't get back to the city. You're right, it can. What do you know about it, lad? See, weren't those words and comments that Cup said really mean? Cup, Cup, my boy. You really need to watch your mouth, man. Okay, okay. Thank you, Cup. Glad we're on the same page. But anyways, back to the point. Did you see how well Hot Rod reacted to those mean comments? But I know what you're thinking. Raccoon Force. I didn't say anything. He didn't say anything. That's the whole point. He didn't react whatsoever. That's exactly what you should do when someone bullies you. You know? Because that will take all of the fun out of the bullying from the bully. You know, just a little bit of a life lesson for you. A raccoon former's life lesson. Keep that in mind. And finally, we have B.B. This next character should be pretty obvious. He's one of the most popular Transformer characters of all time. So if you're a Transformer fan, you should definitely know who this next character is. Pause the video and play to check yourself. If you guessed Bumblebee, you are correct. Wasn't I right? Wasn't that completely obvious? Bumblebee is definitely the most popular Transformer character of all time. He is the only Transformer to have gotten a slow-lo movie so far. The only one. So he is definitely the most popular character of all time. And I feel like his abbreviation makes sense as well. B. B. Bumble. B. They took the first letter from Bumble and the first letter from B to create the abbreviation B. B. It's definitely better than what Prowl's abbreviation was, but no need to rag on that. That's in the past. Let's move forward. I only have one issue with this section of the t-shirt. It's the fact that Bumblebee is placed last in this section of the t-shirt. He does not deserve to be last. He is the most popular Transformer character of all time, and he is the only Transformer character to have gotten a solo movie so far. No other Transformer characters have gotten a solo movie yet. None. So Bumblebee does not deserve to be last. Sure, Optimus hasn't gotten a solo movie yet, so technically that makes Bumblebee more popular than Optimus. But Optimus does deserve to be first in this section of the t-shirt, because he is the leader of the Autobots after all. But Bumblebee should definitely be next in line, right after Optimus, because Bumblebee is technically Optimus' second in command, just like how Starscream is Megatron's second in command. So he should definitely be second in second place. But he does not deserve to be last. By all means, he does not. So yeah, this section of the t-shirt is definitely a smashing hit. But there are a few things that I would have changed. For example, Prowl's abbreviation. I would have changed it from PR to PL or to PWL. I feel like that would have been more of an accurate abbreviation looking at how the other characters' names are abbreviated, you know? Let me know in the comment section below if you agree with that. I also would have changed the order of these characters in this section of the t-shirt. For example, I would have moved Bumblebee from the last section to the second section, which is where he deserves to be. I also have my own order for the characters in this section of the t-shirt that I feel like would make more sense than what is actually there. Here it is. Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, Hot Rod, Jazz, Ironhide, Wheeljack, and Prop. See, I just basically listed all the characters from most popular to least popular, you know? I also would have replaced Prowl with Ratchet, because Ratchet is a lot more popular of a character than Prowl is, and Ratchet actually appeared in a few live action films. He appeared in the first through fourth one, and like I said before, Prowl never appeared in even one live action film. 
So I feel like it would have been nicer if they put Ratchet on here instead of Prep. But there's nothing we can do to change that, so there's no use bragging about that. This section of the shirt is still awesome. So yeah, this section was fun, but it's time to move on to the Dinobot section. Dinobots transform! Alrighty, McTidy, it's time to take a look-see at the Dinorific Dinobot section. I haven't even said a word about this section of the t-shirt yet, and I can already tell that it's going to be super cool. So without further ado, let's get started. First up, we have G-L. But you'd probably think that's a G-I, because sometimes they write a capital I in the same way that they write a lowercase L. But I can assure you that that is an L. So let's see. Who could GL be? I'll give you a few hints. He transforms into a T-Rex, Optimus Prime, Rotom, and Transformers Age of Extinction. He kind of talks in the same way that Elmo from Sesame Street does by saying his name before he actually says something. And he is a teacher in Transformers Rescue Bots Academy. Pause the video and play to check yourself. If you guessed Grimlock, you are correct. He should have been pretty obvious because he is the most popular Dinobot of all time. He's the leader of the Dinobots. And he's technically my favorite Dinobot because technically he's the most coolest and Optimus Prime wrote him most of the time and Optimus Prime is my favorite Transformer character. So you see how that makes sense? So that should have been very easy to guess unless you mistake the L in the abbreviation for an I. But like I said, it is an L. Next up, ladies and germs, I mean gents, <laughs> we have S-G. Who could this be? Hey, that rhymes. <laughs> but yeah, hmm. Hmm. I'll give you a few hints. He transforms into a Triceratops. He's really polite when it comes to manners, and people just can't make up their mind on what to call him. Pause the video and play to trick yourself. If you guess slag or slug or whatever you want to call him, then you are correct. But I guess it doesn't really matter what you call him, because no matter what you call him between those two names, the abbreviation that the creators of the t-shirt put makes sense. Both names start with an S and end with a G, Slag and Slug. So both of those names make sense with this abbreviation, which is SG. Let me know in the comment section below which name you use for the character, Slag or Slug. Let me know down below. Here's what I meant by Slag being super polite. In the 1986 film, the Dinobots came into the Quintessen courtroom to rescue Hot Rod and Cup, and Slag literally knocked the door down, crushing a Quintesson, and as he was walking over the door, which completely crushed that Quintesson, he said, Excuse me! Isn't that polite? I am, that's what I meant by him being super polite. I'm very, very proud of Slag, aren't you? Next up, we have S-N. Hmm, who could this be? This one might be a little bit tricky. So I'll give you a few hints, because I obviously know who it is. I don't have that many hints, so I don't have that many hints to give you, but I have a few. Actually, I have two. He transforms into a Stegosaurus, and he is another Dinobot that appeared in Transformers Rescue Bots Academy. So, pause the video and play to check yourself. If you guess Snarl, then good news. You are correct. This one might have been a little bit harder to guess just by looks, because Snarl isn't that popular of a Dinobot. He didn't even appear in the 1986 film. That proves that he's not as popular as Grimlock or Slug, you know? But to be honest, I don't really like his abbreviation all that much. S-N. That's the first two letters in his name. I feel like it would have been better if they put like S-L or something. Well, I guess they already used a bunch of L's at the end of the abbreviation, like for Grimlock and for the next character that I'm going to talk about. So it might have been confusing if they put SL. Actually, the next character's abbreviation is SL. So that's probably the reason why they didn't put SL as an abbreviation for Snarl. Maybe SA. Nah, that's technically Summit Academy's abbreviation. So that might have gotten confusing too. Hmm. SNA. Nah, too many letters that are in a row. 
SNL. That one sounds good. Let me know if you can think of any other abbreviations down in the comments. Next up, beautiful people, we have SL. You probably knew that this abbreviation was coming because I just mentioned it when I talked about Snarl. But let's see, who could this one be? Hmm. I'll give you a few hints. He transforms into a Brachiosaurus. He is the third and final Dinobot to appear in Transformers Rescue Bots Academy. Besides Hoist, of course. But he was already in that series, but no need to get into that. And, as far as I can tell, he is the only Dinobot to have appeared in the 1986 film, but never talked. I could be wrong, but as far as I can remember, I don't remember this character talking in the 1986 film. Who is he? Pause the video and play to check yourself. If you guess Sludge, then you are correct. Congratulations, beautiful people. This is another Dinobot that probably would have been hard to guess just by looks, but it might have been fine for you. Like, I was able to figure him out. You might be a huge Transformer fan, and it might have been easy for you to guess that this was Sludge. Let me know in the comment section below if it was easy for you. But to be honest, I don't really like Sludge's abbreviation either. I have the same problem with his abbreviation that I had with Snarl's abbreviation. Snarl's abbreviation was SN, and Sludge's is SL. Both of them have the first two letters of the character's name. And I don't think that's a good way to abbreviate someone's name. I feel like the first letter and the last letter is a teeny bit better, wouldn't you say? But if a name contains two words that are a part of the same name, then they could have put, like, the first letter of the first word and the first letter of the second word, like they've done with a few past characters I talked about, like Wheel and Jack. They put the W from Wheel and the J from Jack. Hot Rod, H from Hot, R from Rod, Optimus Prime, O from Optimus, P from Prime, etc. You know? But I guess that's not really something worth talking about because that technically couldn't apply to Sludge because Sludge is only one word, you know? And finally, audience, we're taking a look at SW. Who could this be? I've looked it over, and I think they actually put all of the main Dinobots on this t-shirt. We already talked about Grimlock, Slug, or Slag, or whatever you want to call them. We talked about Snarl, and Sludge. What Dinobot remains? Hmm, let's see. SW, who could this be? I'll give you a few hints. This Dinobot isn't as popular of a Dinobot as Grimlock or Slug, so I don't have that many hints for you, but I have two. He transforms into a Pterodon, and he never actually appeared in Transformers Rescue Bots Academy, but he was slightly homaged in one episode because Grimlock was talking about him with Sludge and Snarl, who did appear in that series. Who is he? Pause the video and play to check yourself. If you guessed Swoop, then you are correct. <laughs> you guessed Swoop? That's kind of a tongue twister, wouldn't you say? <laughs> like I said before, Swoop isn't as popular of a Dinobot as Grimlock or Slag, or Slug, but he is a pretty popular Transformers character. He's at least more popular than Snarl, because Swoop appeared in the 1986 film, and Snarl, on the other hand, did not. And unfortunately, he never actually made a debut in the live-action films either. Grimlock has been in the live-action films, and Slug has too. He was named Slug in the live-action films. In G1, he's named Slag. Don't ask me why. But there is actually this Dinobot named Strafe, who did appear in the live-action films. At least he appeared in Age of Extinction, the fourth live-action film. And the only difference between him and Swoop is Strafe transforms into a two-headed Pteranodon, while Swoop transforms into a one-headed one. So I'm wondering, maybe Strafe was supposed to be an homage of Swoop because he never appeared in the live-action franchise. But I'm trying to figure out why Swoop never appeared in the live-action franchise. I have two ideas on why Swoop never appeared in the live-action franchise. One, maybe they didn't have enough money or supplies to make a CGI version of Swoop. And two, um, maybe they decided that a two-headed Pteranodon would look a lot cooler in CGI than a one-headed one. I feel like the second option is more logical, because if anything, they would need more supplies to make a CGI two-headed Pteranodon than a one-headed one, because a two-headed Pteranodon is a lot larger than a one-headed one, because it has 
two heads, you know? And I feel like a two-headed Pteranodon would have looked a lot cooler in CGI than a one-headed one ever would. Because there's nothing more cooler than a two-headed Pteranodon. Except maybe a three-headed one, or a four-headed one, or a five-headed one, or a six-headed one. And we should probably stop there. This isn't a Marvel channel. We're not talking about Hydra's catchphrase from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Here it is, by the way. If they cut off one head, two more shall take its place. See, we're not talking about that. But speaking of Hydra... Wouldn't it be cool if there was a Hydra-themed Dinobot? It would basically be a Dinobot that transforms into a Hydra-like creature that has billions of heads, um, and if one gets chopped off, multiple would grow back. It would look just like a Hydra from Greek mythology, except it would have like a Dinobot-themed color scheme with metallic gray and red, you know? Wouldn't that be sick? Here's my idea for robot mode for that bad boy. It would basically be a robot mode that's decked out in metallic gray and red, and it would have multiple giraffe-like necks sticking out from all over its sides, you know? And that would definitely be an awesome toy as well. Here are a few ideas that I have referring to a toy Hydra Dinobot. It would definitely be a leader class, because a uh, Hydra is a very large mythical creature. So the smallest it would definitely go would be a leader class, but it might be able to go larger too, if there are any size classes that are larger than leader class. Let me know down below if there are any. Here's another cool idea. As you know, if you chop off one Hydra head, multiple grow back. Like, maybe you could have the ability to remove the heads um, for the Hydra, and you could tab Moran or something. Or maybe they could be um, headless sections that you can tap heads onto and they could package other heads with it. So like you could pretend like you could chop one head off by removing it and you could add on multiple others. Or maybe there could be a bunch of holes around um, the Hydra's neck and it could have different heads with necks that you could peg on. So you could chop one off and tap multiple on to reenact what Hydras do in Greek mythology. Wouldn't that be cool? Movie directors everywhere. If you're planning on making another live-action Transformers film, keep my Hydra Dinobot idea in mind. It would be really cool to see that in live-action. Or in animation. I don't really care. So, yeah. It is a little bit sad that Swoop never appeared in the live-action franchise, but all is forgiven. Because, like I said, a two-headed Pteranodon is definitely a lot cooler than a one-headed one. But I know what you're thinking. Raccoon Formers. If a two-headed Pteranodon is a lot cooler than a one-headed one, why wasn't Strafe in G1? Well, I think I have an idea. The live-action franchise was directed by Michael Bay, except in the case of the Bumblebee movie. The Bumblebee movie was directed by Travis Knight. But G1 in the 1986 film were not directed by Michael Bay. So here's my idea on why Strafe appeared in the live-action franchise but not in G1, and why Swoop appeared in G1 and not in the live-action franchise. Like I said, the live-action franchise, except for the Bumblebee movie, was directed by Michael Bay, and G1 in the 1986 film was not. The 1986 film was directed by Nelson Shin, and I couldn't actually find who the director of G1, the animated series, was. But here's a picture that I found online that might explain that. See? But my point is, um, Swoop never appeared in the live-action franchise, which was directed by Michael Bay, and maybe S Michael Bay was the one who decided that a two-headed Pteranodon would have been a lot cooler than a one-headed one. And maybe... Um, the director of G1 in the 1986 film didn't really have a problem with the one-headed Pteranodon. You know? That actually makes quite a lot of sense. But it would have been cool for Swoop and Strafe to be able to meet in the same bit of media. I know, it probably would have been confusing to have two Pteranodon Dinobots in the same bit of Transformers media, which is probably the reason why they're not in the same bit of Transformers media. But it would have been cool to see them meet. There could be two Pteranodon Dinobots, and they could fight it out Pteranodon to Pteranodon to win a spot on Grimlock's team. You know? That would be cool. Movie directors, if you're planning on making another Transformers film, definitely keep that idea in mind too. It would definitely be cool to see two Pteranodon Dinobots fight it out for a spot on Grimlock's team. And be sure to keep my idea about the Hydra-themed Dinobot in mind too. 
because both of those ideas would be cool to see in both live action or animation. So yeah, it is a bit sad that Swoop and Strafe never met, but it's not a big deal because I can see the both of them in Transformers media, just in different kinds of Transformers media. It would have been cool to see them meet, but hey, we should probably stop bragging on that because there's nothing we can do to change it, you know? Well, this section was definitely another smashing hit by Transformers. And to be honest, I feel like I like this section more than the Autobot section. I found a lot of problems with the Autobot section, but to be honest, I don't have that many problems with the Dinobot section. The only real problemo that I had with this section of the t-shirt was some of the abbreviations that were used for some of the characters. Like Snarl's abbreviation, which was SN, and Sludge's abbreviation, which was SL. I don't really like how they use the first and second letter of a character's name as an abbreviation. I feel like the first letter and the last letter is a teensy weensy bit better, wouldn't you say? And I also feel like they should have done their L's a little bit different. I actually don't have any problems with them using the L's, but the L's look too much like an uppercase I. Like, sometimes they write an uppercase I in the same way that they write a lowercase L. A normal uppercase I looks like this, but sometimes they write one like this. See, and doesn't this look just like the L beside Grimlock and Sludge's name? That could create so much confusion. People might think that Grimlock's abbreviation is GI or Sludge's SI, which I can assure you, those are not the abbreviation for those two characters. So don't you see how it could have created confusion? I just really wish that they wrote uppercase I's like they should. But no need to get into that. That's not the point of this channel. Well, ladies and gents, this section was definitely fun to take a look at, but it's time to go dark because the next section we're taking a look at is the Decepticon section. I have suddenly turned evil for no reason at all. Bow down before me. <coughs> Sorry about that, guys. But I know what you're thinking. Raccoon Formers, why were you just talking all evil-like? Well, audience, I'm glad you asked because I have an answer. The reason why I was talking all evil-like is because we are now taking a look at the bad guys of the t-shirt. The Decepticons and the Insecticons. So, can you see why I wanted to talk all evil-like? It's a good homage to what we're about to talk about. So let's get started by taking a look at M. G. G. Willikers. Who could this be? This character is definitely one of the most popular Decepticons of all time, hands down. Which is probably the reason why he is first in this section of the t-shirt. He is definitely number one. The Big Bahini, or something like that. But since he's so popular, I'm not going to give any hints. Because if I give any hints, it will give him away pretty much right off the bat. But if you don't know who this character is, like if you're a newbie to the world of Transformers or something, feel free to just skip past this part of the video and just skip right to the part where I reveal the character. You can do that with any of the characters if you're not completely sure who they are. Don't worry, I don't think you're cheating. Don't be shy. But anyways, back to this character. Pause the video and play to check yourself. If you guessed my boy Megatron, then you are correct. Can you see what I meant by him being the most popular Decepticon of all time? He's the leader of the Decepticons for crying out loud. I think when it comes to any kind of movie, the leader of a specific group from that movie is probably the most popular character from that film. Like in the case of Transformers, Optimus is the most popular Autobot because he's the leader, Grimlock is the most popular Dinobot because he's the leader, and Megatron is the most popular Decepticon because he's the leader. The three leaders, the three musketeers or something. Now, would you spare me a few minutes to discuss Megatron's abbreviation, which I have a lot to talk about by the way. Megatron is another character whose name consists of two individual words, Mega and Tron. And unfortunately, his name is not abbreviated in the way that I like when it comes to characters with those names. The way that I like to abbreviate characters with names like that um, is by putting the first letter of the first word and the first letter of the second. So in this case, it would be the first letter from Mega, M, 
and the first letter from Tron, which is T. But I think I get why they didn't use that abbreviation for this character. Because MT, that kind of sounds like the abbreviation for a search and rescue force, you know, EMTs. And it probably would have been a bit weird to abbreviate a villain with the same abbreviation as a search and rescue force. Because a search and rescue force, they're heroes. And Megatron is the complete opposite of a hero. You know, he's the leader of the Decepticons, aka the leader of the villains. So I can kind of see why they didn't abbreviate him with that specific abbreviation. So since they were unable to use the abbreviation MT, they needed to find a substitute abbreviation for Megatron. And believe me, I am not mad that they weren't able to use the abbreviation MT. No way, Jose. Because if what I said before was accurate on why they didn't use that abbreviation, that is 100% a perfect reason to not use that abbreviation for Megatron. But I love the substitute abbreviation that they ended up using. MG is literally the perfect abbreviation for Megatron. The perfect one. Because when you say it out loud, it really does seem to speak Megatron very clearly a lot clearer than what MT ever would for Megatron. And I feel like that abbreviation is meant to homage something very special for Megatron. Here's what I mean. There is this one nickname that many people, Transformer fans and Transformer characters alike, have used to refer to Megatron from time to time, and that is Megs. But you're probably wondering, what does that nickname have to do with Megatron's abbreviation? Well. I'll tell you. Here's how you spell Megs, as in to referring to Megatron's nickname. You spell it M-E-I-G-S, with a silent I. But here's what the spelling of Megs has to do with Megatron's abbreviation that they used for his square on the t-shirt. The letters that they ended up using for Megatron's abbreviation, M-G, are in the name Megs. M is the first letter, and G is the second to last letter. But here's another idea of an abbreviation that they could have used from this idea. They could have abbreviated him as MS, but that wouldn't have worked as well as the abbreviation MG would have, and here's why. Because the letter S isn't actually in Megatron's name, so how can you abbreviate something with a letter that isn't actually in the word or name that you're trying to abbreviate? How does that make any logical sense, you know? So I feel like the only thing that has to do with Transformers that they could have abbreviated with the abbreviation MS is if they were trying to abbreviate the name Megs for this square of the t-shirt, which I don't think is what the creator of the t-shirt was trying to achieve. Because Megs is a good nickname for Megatron, but it's not Megatron's all-time name. And I feel like it would be a bit more logical to abbreviate Megatron's all-time name for his square of the t-shirt, which I think is what the creator of the t-shirt was intending to do. And that's why I feel like MG is the all-time best abbreviation for Megatron, because the two letters MG are in Megatron's nickname, Megs, and they're in Megatron's actual name. So it's like being able to abbreviate Megatron's name and his nickname at the exact same time. How cool and perfect is that? And it's also a perfect way to be able to abbreviate Megatron's name while slightly homaging one of his nicknames at the exact same time. I just love that idea. It is so creative. One of the most creative ideas I have ever heard. Ever. If that was their intended idea, it might not have been their intention. Let me know in the comment section below if you think that was their intention for abbreviating the character. If it was, great. If it wasn't, then everything that I said is technically like a self-made homage, which I guess is kind of cool, because I feel like self-made homages are the coolest kind of homages. They're the most imaginative, wouldn't you say? Next up, ladies and gentlemen, we're taking a look at SW. G. Willikins. Who could this guy be? Hmm. I'll give you a few hints. He transforms into a cassette player in G1. He has many different minions that transform into cassette tapes. And he is voiced by the same actor who voices Megatron in G1. And in Transformers Prime, he doesn't talk whatsoever. Who is he? Pause the video and play to check yourself. If you guessed Soundwave, then good news, you are so smart, because you are correct. This character is another very popular Decepticon, if you are a huge fan of Transformers. If you're a newbie to the world of Transformers, then this might be new for all of you. But 
Soundwave is one of my favorite Decepticons. I feel like he might be my second favorite because Megatron is my favorite Decepticon because he's the leader and I'm a huge fan of leaders when it comes to movies, but Soundwave is pretty sick too. Let me know in the comment section below who your favorite Decepticon is. His abbreviation is 100% perfect. Soundwave is another character whose name consists of two individual words, sound and wave, and they abbreviated his name in the exact way that I like to abbreviate characters with names like that. Like I said before, the two words that are a part of Soundwave's name are sound and wave, and the two letters that they use to abbreviate Soundwave's name are S and W. S from sound and W from wave. 100% perfect. So yeah, perfect abbreviation. But it's not the most easiest thing to say. It doesn't have as good of a ring to it as some of the other abbreviations I took a look at, like MG, OP, BB, GL, etc. But it's a good abbreviation, and I couldn't have asked for anything better. Next up, friends, we're taking a look at TC. Hmm, who could this guy be? Let's see. I'll give you a few hints. He is one of the Seekers, an elite group of Transformers. He has a few similarities with Thor from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And if you watched episode 3 of Gaming with Raccoon Formers, which was on Angry Birds Transformers, you will have seen this character in that game, and you will have seen that he had a really powerful weapon. Who is he? Pause the video and play to check yourself. If you guessed Thundercracker, then you are correct. Congratulations, you are so smart. Thundercracker might have been a little bit harder of a character to guess because he's not as popular of a Decepticon as Megatron or Soundwave, but he is a pretty good character, and I am a huge fan of the Seekers. Huge. H-U-G-E. I love the Seekers. Thundercracker is yet again another character whose name consists of two individual words. Thunder and Cracker. And did you see what I meant by him having similarities to Thor from the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Because Thor is the god of thunder, and the first word in Thundercracker's name is thunder. But um, Pretty good, right? Well, back to the point. Like I said, the two words that are in Thundercracker's name are thunder and cracker, and they abbreviated his name in the exact way that I like to abbreviate characters with names like that. They took the first letter from the first word, and the first letter from the second. They took T from Thunder and C from Cracker, combined them to create the abbreviation TC. It's just perfect. It really is. And unlike Soundwave's abbreviation, this abbreviation has a perfect ring to it. TC. Pretty easy to say. It really is. Next up, audience, we're taking a look at D V G. Who could this be? Let's see. I'll give you a few hints. He is one of the most popular combiners of all time. He consists of eight individual characters that are put all into one. And the group that he is the leader of has the word construct in the name. But they like to do the opposite of constructing things. They like to destroy things. Who is he? Pause the video and play to check yourself. If you guessed Devastator, then you are correct. Congratulations. Devastator should have been pretty obvious to guess if you're an all-time fan of Transformers because he's one of the most popular characters of all time. And he is hands down the most popular combiner of all time, wouldn't you say? And he's technically the leader of the Constructicons, even though Devastator is basically all eight of the Constructicons in one single character. Because... Half the time that the Constructicons appear in any type of Transformers media, they're combined it as Devastator. So Devastator is technically like a one-man army. He's the leader of himself, wouldn't you say? Now, would you be so kind to spare me a few more minutes so I can discuss Devastator's abbreviation? It's a good abbreviation, but I actually have a few mixed feelings about it. Devastator is not a character whose name consists of two individual words. His name consists of only one word, Devastator. That's one single word, you know? But the way I like to abbreviate characters with names that consist of only one word is by taking the first and last letter of the character's name. Like how they did with Jazz back in the Autobot section. You know, Jay-Z. But unfortunately, they did not do that with Devastator. They took the first 
and second letter of the character's name, which, like I mentioned before, is not my favorite way to abbreviate any type of name. But what totally makes up for it is how the abbreviation sounds when you say it out loud. It sounds so cool. DV. It sounds like the word devious. And devious is a fancy word for evil, which totally makes sense for Devastator, because Devastator is definitely evil. You know? Either that, or people might think you're talking about a DVD player. Hard to tell. And finally, ladies and gents, we're taking a look at ST. Hmm. Who could this be? Let's see. Let's go ahead and put our thinking caps on so we can figure this out. This character is another very popular Decepticon. And normally when it comes to characters that are very popular, I don't give hints because if you're an all-time fan of Transformers, you should know who this character is. But one thing I want to mention is this abbreviation isn't the complete best abbreviation for this character, so the abbreviation might make it a little bit harder to guess this character. So I'll give you a few hints. He's Megatron's quote-unquote loyal second-in-command. He somewhat recreated Star Wars Attack of the Clones in the Season 2 finale of Transformers Animated. He has a lot of similarities with the final character of the Autobot section, Bumblebee. And in the Bumblebee movie, Blitzwing was mistaken as this character. Who is he? Pause the video and play to check yourself. If you guessed my boy Starscream, then you are correct. Can you see what I meant by him being one of the most popular Decepticons of all time? He's almost more popular than Megatron. Because every version of Starscream that I can think of has one thing in common. One thing. They all have a hatred against Megatron, and they all try to betray Megatron at every available opportunity. Every version of Starscream I can think of has that in common. G1, animated, prime, etc. So that trait of him wanting to betray Megatron at every available opportunity is in Starscream's personality in pretty much every version of Starscream. And there's a reason why I didn't put that as a hint. Since that's such a popular character trait of Starscream's, I worried if I put that as a hint, it would have given it away right from the get-go. So I did it a little bit different. Remember how I said, He's Megatron's quote-unquote loyal second-in-command. I used air quotes, which means the opposite. So that's what I meant. He isn't a loyal second-in-command. He's the opposite of loyal. <laughs> Pretty sneaky, right? But let's stop talking about that, and let's start talking about Starscream's abbreviation, because I have a lot to say about that. Like I said before, Starscream's abbreviation isn't 100% the best. Starscream is another character whose name consists of two individual words, Star and Scream. So if it were up to me, I would have abbreviated him as SS. It would be taking the first letter from Star and the first letter from Scream. But unfortunately, they did not do that. They abbreviated Starscream in the exact way that I don't like to abbreviate any type of name. They took the first two letters of the character's name. I just don't really feel like that's the best. And ST? That seems like the abbreviation for the word saint or something. I don't know. But it's an okay abbreviation. I just feel like SS would have been a bit better in the way that I like. But do you remember how I said Starscream had a lot of similarities with the final character of the Autobot section, Bumblebee? Let's talk about that. Like I said way back when I was talking about Bumblebee in the Autobot section, Bumblebee is technically like Optimus' second-in-command, just like how Starscream is Megatron's second-in-command. And one thing that I didn't like about the Autobots section is that Bumblebee was placed last in that section when he should have been second right after Optimus. But coincidentally enough, Starscream, who is also a second-in-command character, is also placed last when he should have been second right after Megatron. But isn't it kind of ironic that two second-in-command-like characters were placed last instead of second? I'm wondering if there was an intention behind that. Like, maybe they were trying to bookend the Autobot and Decepticon section with a leader and a second-in-command. That seems like a little bit of a weird way to go, but hey, it's alright. And maybe in the case of the Decepticons, maybe they were trying to put a little bit of space between Megatron and Starscream since they're so arch-enemy-like and if they were close to each other, they'd try to fight each other like they always do in Transformers media. Maybe that's what they were trying to do. Maybe they were trying to homage how Megatron and Starscream act in Transformers media. If that's the case, 
That's pretty cool. But it's kind of hard to tell what the t-shirt creator's intention was. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any ideas on what he or she's intention might have been. I would greatly appreciate that. So, yeah, this section is definitely an abomination. It's definitely another smashing hit by Transformers. It's 100% awesome. But if you're wondering what my favorite section is and what my least favorite section is, make sure to stay tuned, because I will be ranking all four of the sections at the end of the video. So, like I said, stay tuned. There are a few unfortunate issues about this section of the t-shirt, unfortunately. Most of them I've talked about already, but... I might as well go over them again, just in case you didn't catch them. One thing that I didn't like about this section of the t-shirt is some of the abbreviations that were used for some of the characters. Most of the abbreviations that were used for these characters were abbreviated by putting the first two letters of the character's name, like ST and DV. Which like I said before, abbreviating a name with the first two letters of the character's name isn't my favorite way to abbreviate any type of name or word. So it's a bit unfortunate that they decided to abbreviate some of these characters like that, but it's not that big a deal. Some of the abbreviations weren't so good, but some of them are perfectly fine. Like MG, SW, TC, they're all perfect. They perfectly speak those characters. I also don't like how Starscream was placed last rather than second. He's Megatron's second in command, so he should have been second right after Megatron. But like I said before, maybe they were trying to put a little bit of space in between Megatron and Starscream since they're so arch enemy like to make sure they don't fight each other. You know, that does make a little bit of sense. And if that's the case, that's a really cool homage to how Megatron and Starscream act in Transformers media. But there is one more issue that I have yet to talk about in the video so far. I do not like how they forgot to put Shockwave in here. Shockwave is another very popular Decepticon. He's definitely one of the main four Decepticons, the big four. So I have a feeling they might be a part of the big three. Not the big three, the big four. The big four are Megatron, Starscream, Soundwave, and Shockwave. That's not an official list, that's just a list that I made up. But three out of those four characters have been put in this section of the t-shirt. I just feel like Shockwave should have been in here. Guys, guys, let's stop being Eeyore. We have to talk about some of the good things about this section of the t-shirt. For one thing, I am a huge fan of how this section of the t-shirt is shaped. It's like a sideways uppercase letter T. It's T-shaped. I really like that. It's a lot cooler than the shapes of the other sections of this t-shirt. Feel free to go back and forth to each other section so you can see what I mean. But overall, this section of the t-shirt is definitely where it's at. It's definitely 100% awesome. But all good things must come to an end, and it's time to take a look at the final section of the periodic table of the Transformers t-shirt, the Insecticon section. Insecticons transform! Welcome to the grand finale of today's video, ladies and gentlemen. We've definitely been through quite a lot in this video, but we are now getting ready to take a look at the final section of the periodic table of the Transformers t-shirt, the Insecticon section. So without further ado, let's get started by taking a look at B.S. Hmm, who could this guy be? Let's see... Hmm. I would give you a hint on who this character is, which I do know a few hints that I could give you for this character, but hints are so old-fashioned. And I decided for this particular character, I'm going to give you a riddle to help figure him out. So to help us out with this riddle, we're going to need a picture of a character from the classic video game Skylanders. You know the video game Skylanders trap team? Well. I'm going to bring in a picture of a character from that particular video game because that picture is the source of this riddle. Here it is. Now let's examine this picture very closely. What do you see? You see an animated-ish turtle, right? And what do turtles have on their backs? A shell. And what does this particular turtle have on his shell? Bombs. Enough said. Put those two things together and pause the video and play to check yourself. If you guessed bombshell, then you are correct. Now do you understand the riddle? That turtle had bombs on his shell, hence the name Bombshell. Isn't that good? <laughs> it's making me laugh. <laughs> That's how good it really is. <laughs> yeah, pull yourself together, Raccoon Formers. Yep, yep, yep. And coincidentally enough, this character from Skylander's Trap Team is 
also named Bombshell. So he was literally the perfect character to help me out with this riddle. The perfect one. Now, let's say goodbye to Mr. Bombshell. He's got to go back and cause mischief in Skylands for the Skylanders to have to stop. Goodbye, Bombshell. We'll miss you. Don't come back soon. <laughs> is he gone? I think he is. Now that he's gone, let's get back to Bombshell from the Transformers universe. He is a very popular Insecticon, and a very cool one too. He has an amazingly cool superpower. Probably the coolest Transformers superpower ever. I'm not going to talk about it just yet, because I'm going to talk about it later on in the video to create some dramatic tension, but I'll give you a small hint on what his superpower is. It has something to do with Professor X from the X-Men universe. Bombshell transforms into a rhinoceros beetle, so he's basically a beetle with a rhinoceros-like horn on the front, hence the name of the bug. But wouldn't it be cool if Bombshell's rhinoceros beetle horn could actually shoot bombs? It would be a good homage to his name, wouldn't you say? Bombshell's abbreviation is 100% spot on to the way that I like. He is another character whose name consists of two individual words, Bomb and Shell. And they abbreviated his name in the exact way that I like to abbreviate characters with names that consist of two individual words. They took the first letter from the first word and the first letter from the second one. They took the first letter from Bomb, B, and the first letter from Shell, S, combined them, to create the abbreviation B.S. It's 100% the perfect abbreviation for this character. Next up, bug lovers, we're taking a look at C.H. Hmm, who could this guy be? Let's see. This is definitely a good hmm situation because C.H., V.N., and B.R. never actually made a debut in G1. Only Bombshell, SH, and KB did. So before I looked up all the Insecticon names on TF Wiki, I didn't know who CH, VN, and BR are. But I do now, so I'll do my best to give you a few hints. His name sounds really satisfying, but a little bit tongue twisty when you say it out loud. His name kind of sounds like the name of a sushi restaurant. And his name sounds exactly like this one character from Skylanders. Who is he? Pause the video and play to check yourself. If you guess Chop Shop, then you are correct. Chop Shop may never have appeared in G1 or any type of media, animated or live action, but he's a pretty cool looking Insecticon. Like his insect mode, for instance. He transforms into a stag beetle, a very cool looking stag beetle to be exact. And I call a stag beetle the lobster bug. I'm not exactly sure if that's an official nickname for the bug, but stag beetles have these pinchers, which are really lobster-like. But don't you think I was right about Chop Shop's name? Doesn't it sound so satisfying when you say it out loud? Kinda tongue twisty, but cool. Chop Shop, Chop Shop, Chop Shop, Chop Shop. <laughs> Just sounds so cool when I say it out loud, don't you think? But doesn't the name Chop Shop kinda sound like the name of a sushi restaurant? Because sushi chefs chop sushi all the time. So when you say chop shop, it's like saying it's a shop where they sell chopped sushi. So if anyone's planning on opening a new sushi restaurant and you want it to have a transformer theme, that's a good name idea for you right there. But do you remember uh, this guy? Yep, this character is from the good old video game Skylanders. And like I mentioned when I was talking about hints for Chop Shop, Chop Shop's name sounds just like this character's name. And here's why. This character's name is Chop Chop, not Chop Shop, Chop Chop. Don't they sound the same? Chop Shop, Chop Chop. Say that ten times fast. His name might be the light of this guy's spark, but his abbreviation is eh, not so cool. Chop Shop is another character whose name consists of two individual words, Chop and Shop. So if it were up to me, I would have abbreviated him as CS. It would be taking the first letter from CHOP, C, and the first letter from SHOP, S. And that's the way that I like to abbreviate characters with names that consist of two individual words. But unfortunately, they did not do it that way. If you take a look at Chop Shop's picture, you'll see how they abbreviated him and you know exactly how I feel about that. But it's not that big a deal. CH may not be the best abbreviation for this character, but it's... Uh, so-so abbreviation. It's not the best, 
but it's not the worst. I just feel like CS would have been a teensy weensy bit better, wouldn't you say? Next up, ladies and gents, we're taking a look at the N. This is another good hmm situation because VN is another Insecticon that never made a debut in G1, along with Chop Shop and BR. So I don't know a ton about this character, but I'll do my best to think of a few hints for you. I actually only have one hint for you, but it's a pretty good one. Take a look at his abbreviation. It's VN. Which supervillain from Spider-Man do you think matches this abbreviation? Doc Ock? No. Electro? No. Green Goblin? No. Which one's left? Pause the video and play to check yourself. If you guessed Venom, then you are correct. No joke, this character from Transformers is named Venom. Just like that one supervillain from Spider-Man, which I find very, very cool. I especially find it cool that they decided to name an insect-themed Transformer off of an insect-themed supervillain because both of them have insect themes, so it makes it 100% perfect. Venom transforms into a cicada, which is kind of ironic because cicadas aren't venomous. They don't bite, sting, or anything. They're just incredibly noisy. Maybe they were trying to say that cicadas are like the venom to your brain since they're so incredibly noisy that it makes it impossible for you to think. If that's the case, that's pretty cool but it's still kind of ironic and funny. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about Venom's abbreviation. Venom is a character whose name consists of only one word. Venom is just one word. That's probably a no-brainer, but I thought I'd tell you. And the way that I like to abbreviate characters with names that consist of only one word is by taking the first and last letter of the character's name, like what they did with Jazz way back in the Autobot section. You know, Jay-Z. But in the case of Venom, it would be V-M taking the first letter, V, and the last letter, M. But unfortunately, they did not do that. They took the first and second letter of the character's name, and you know exactly how I feel about that. But it's not that big a deal. VN is an okay abbreviation, but I just felt like VM would have been a bit better. Next up, friends, we're taking a look at SH. This character should be a little bit easier to guess than the two previous ones because this character actually made a debut in G1 along with Bombshell and KB. So he should be a bit easier to guess, but I'll give you a few hints. He's the leader of the three Insecticons that appeared in G1. He has electricity powers like Electro from Spider-Man and his name sounds just like this one character from Revenge of the Fallen, but a little bit different. Pause the video and play to check yourself. If you guessed shrapnel, then you are correct. See what I mean? Shrapnel should have been a bit easier to guess than Chop Shop and Venom because Shrapnel, Bombshell, and KB made a debut in G1. Chop Shop and Venom did not. So congratulations if you managed to guess him. But do you remember this guy that I talked about while I was giving hints for shrapnel? His name is Scalpel. So can you see what I meant by him having a name that sounds just like Shrapnel? Both names start with an S and end with an L. So it's a pretty cool homage. I haven't actually talked about any of the pictures for any of the characters in this t-shirt yet, but there are some things about Shrapnel's picture that I cannot neglect to mention. Shrapnel's picture isn't 100% spot on to how Shrapnel appeared in G1. Shrapnel transforms into a stag beetle, AKA the lobster bug, just like Chop Shop. And when he transforms into robot mode, his lobster-like stag beetle pinchers go on both sides of his head like moose antlers. And that's what allows him to control his Electro from Spider-Man-like electricity powers. But take a look at the picture of Shrapnel right up here. See his electricity conductors? Now take a look at the picture of Shrapnel in this square on the t-shirt. No electricity conductors. Hmm. Curiouser and curiouser. Yes, Batman, I am quite curious on why that's the case. Let me know in the comment section below if you know why they did that to Shrapnel's picture. Now, let's talk about his abbreviation. Shrapnel's name is just one word. Shrapnel is just one single word. And the way that I would have abbreviated him 
is by taking the first and last letter from his name. So his abbreviation would be SL. But I don't think that abbreviation would work for him, because if you remember back in the Dinobot section, they used the abbreviation SL for sludge. And I feel like it would be way too confusing to use the exact same abbreviation for two different characters. Even if they are in different sections, it still would be way too confusing. So I do understand why they abbreviated him by taking the first two letters of his name. Like I mentioned probably a bazillion times by now, that isn't my favorite way to abbreviate any type of name or word, but I do understand why they used that technique for this particular circumstance. Next up, beautiful people, we're taking a look at KB. Hmm, who could this guy be? Let's see. I'll give you a few hints. He's the third and final Insecticon to make a debut in G1, and he likes to kick the opposite of forward. Who is he? Pause the video and play to check yourself. If you guessed kickback, then you are correct. Did you see what I did there? I said he likes to kick the opposite of forward, and what's the opposite of forward? Back, and his name is Kickback. I'm not entirely certain if he actually likes to kick in G1. It was just sort of a play on words. Cute word play. Thank you, Black Widow. That's mighty kind of you. Kickback transforms into a grasshopper, which is a pretty cool choice for an Insecticon bug mode because grasshoppers are really quick, athletic, and agile, which are definitely good qualities for a villain to have. So I am very impressed with that decision. Kickback's abbreviation is definitely A-OK. -okay. Kickback is another character whose name consists of two individual words, kick and back and they abbreviated his name in the exact way that I like to abbreviate characters with names that consist of two individual words. They took the first letter from kick, K, and the first letter from back, B, combined them to create the abbreviation KB. It's 100% the perfect abbreviation for this character. And finally, ladies and germs, er, I mean gents, we're taking a look at B, R. Hmm. Who could this guy be? Let us see. I'll give you a few hints. I actually only have one hint for y'all, but it's another riddle-like hint. His name is the exact word that you would use to describe a large artillery of weapons. So, who is he? Pause the video and play to check yourself. If you guessed barrage or barrage, take your pick on how you want to pronounce it, then you are correct. Just like I hinted at, the word barrage is the word that you use to describe a large artillery of weapons. Let me check my Alexa. Alexa, what's the definition of barrage? A heavy barrier of artillery fire to protect one's own advancing or retreating troops or to stop the advance of enemy troops. Thank you, Alexa. You are well appreciated. Barrage may have never made a debut in G1, but despite that, he's still incredibly cool looking. He looks like the muscle of the Insecticon crew, since he's so big and buff. He kind of reminds me of Wrecker from Star Wars The Bad Batch and Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy, because they're both the muscle of their respective teams from their respective movies. Barrage transforms into a rhinoceros beetle, which definitely fits his muscle character-like body. Because rhinoceroses are really tough creatures, so I have to assume that rhinoceros beetles are tough as well. So, if that's the case, it definitely fits his muscle character-like body. A muscle in the Insecticon crew seems like a super duper ooper schmooper cool idea, and I really wish that Barrage made a debut in G1, and I feel that same way about Chop Shop and Venom. It would've been cool for all of them to make a debut in G1. Imagine this, what if there were two different teams of Insecticons? A team with Bombshell, Shrapnel, and Kickback, and a team with Barrage, Chop Shop, and Venom. And maybe there could be two opposing Insecticon teams that could face off every now and then. Wouldn't that be cool? Barrage's abbreviation isn't 100% how I would have liked. Barrage is just one word, so I would have taken the first letter, B, and the last letter, E, combined them to create the abbreviation, B, E. That kind of sounds a lot better and it has a good ring to it as well. But unfortunately, they did not do that. If you look closely, you'll see how they abbreviated him and you know exactly how I feel about that. But it's not that big a deal. BR is an okay abbreviation, it just doesn't sound as good as BE, that's all. Woo-wee, 
This section is definitely another abomination. It's another smashing hit by Transformers. It's 100% awesome. It was a cool section, but it wasn't 100% perfect. Like everybody says, nothing and no one is ever 100% perfect. There were a few issues that I had with this section of the t-shirt. Most of them I've talked about already, like some of the abbreviations and shrapnels and accurate pictures, so I'm not going to dive into those issues too much, but there are a few other issues that I want to mention. First, I'd like to answer a question that I know you all have been probably pondering ever since I talked about the Decepticon section. What if? No, not what if. That's Marvel. This is Transformers. You're probably wondering who the Insecticon leader is. Remember back when I was talking about Megatron in the Decepticon section, I was talking about the three leaders of Transformers, Optimus, Grimlock, and Megatron? I never actually mentioned who the Insecticon leader was. Well, at the time, I didn't know who the Insecticon leader was, but I do now, and I'll explain that to you. You probably think that it's Bombshell since he's first in the Insecticon section of the t-shirt, and so far, the leader of each Transformer group is the one that's first in their section of the t-shirt. But believe it or not, Bombshell's actually not the leader of the Insecticons. So you're probably wondering, who is? Well, there are actually two groups of Insecticons. One group consists of Shrapnel, Bombshell, and Kickback, and Shrapnel is the leader of that group. And the other group consists of Venom, Chop Shop, Barrage, and this character named Ramsack, who for whatever reason never actually appeared in this section of the t-shirt. And Venom is the leader of that group. So I think I see their dilemma with putting the leader of the Insecticons first in the Insecticon section of the t-shirt. Since both of those leaders are in this section of the t-shirt, so it probably would have been too big of a decision to decide which leader gets to go first. It's not like the two leaders could play rock, paper, scissors to decide who gets to go first, although it would be pretty funny to see Transformers playing rock, paper, scissors. So I think that's the reason why they chose an anonymous character to go first in the Insecticon section of the t-shirt. And I am really happy with their choice of an anonymous Insecticon character. Bombshell is one of the coolest Insecticons ever. He at least has the coolest superpower. Like I hinted out when I was talking about Bombshell earlier in the video, um, Bombshell's superpower has something to do with Professor X from the X-Men universe. It's that he has the ability to control minds with his cerebro shells, just like how Professor X can control people's minds in X-Men. So apparently Bombshell is psychic. <laughs> Who knew? So if that's the reason why they chose Bombshell to go first instead of one of the leaders, then good choice, Hasbro. The only thing that I would have changed that I haven't actually mentioned yet is I would have switched Chop Shop and Venom and Shrapnel and Kickback's places around. So that way all the Insecticons that made a debut in G1 would be together, and all the Insecticons that didn't make a debut in G1 would be together. I feel like that would be a bit more logical. But other than those few issues, this section is definitely A-OK. -okay. Raccoonformers, yeah. Some final thoughts on the t-shirt. It's a phenomenal t-shirt and it has four individual sections that are equally phenomenal in their own unique and special way. And just like I promised, I will now rank each section of the t-shirt to determine which one is the best and which one is the worst. So stick around, you're not gonna wanna miss this. Taking last place goes to the Autobot section, which I have to guess that you're probably very surprised about. Because remember what I said before I started talking about the Autobot section? I said the Autobot section houses some of the coolest characters in the history of Transformers. And I do think that's true, but this section just didn't tickle my fancy as much as the other ones did. It had the most issues, but the issue that really burned me the most is how they left out Ratchet. When I say that the Autobot section houses some of the coolest characters in the history of Transformers, Ratchet definitely falls into that category. And I think that's the reason why the Autobot section is in last place. Otherwise, it probably would have been like second or third. Overall, a pretty decent section though. Taking third place goes to the Insecticon section. It's a pretty good section. But the only reason why it's in third place is because I like the two sections that I'm about to talk about a bit more than this one. So this is the only place I could fit it that would actually make sense. But it's a good section as well. Taking second place goes to the Decepticon section. Most of the issues that I have with this section are somewhat similar to the issues that I have with the Autobot section. Like the order of the characters isn't 100% the best. A second in command character, Starscream, was placed last rather than second. 
second, and they once again left out a very important character, Shockwave. So you're probably wondering why this section is in second place rather than third place. Well, the Decepticons are more popular than the Insecticons, so I have a bit more mercy for them, but Shockwave isn't as popular of a character as Ratchet. He's definitely where it's at in Transformers history, but he's not as popular as Ratchet, so it doesn't really burn me as much. But like I mentioned before, I love this section's shape. A sideways letter T is super creative. It's T-shaped, if you will. But overall, it's a good section. And taking first place goes to the Dinobot section. In my opinion, there's not much to like about this section. It's almost 100% perfect. Really, the only issue that I have with this section is some of the abbreviations. Everything else is 100% spot on. The order of the characters is amazing. They didn't leave out any important characters. And not only that, the color scheme of this section is green. And I'm not sure if you know this, but green is my favorite color. So it's almost like this section was meant to be my favorite. So this section is 100% the best section of the t-shirt. So yeah. That's how I would rank each section of the periodic table of the Transformers t-shirt. But what about you? Let me know in the comment section below how you would rank each section of the t-shirt. But let's get back to the t-shirt, shall we? There's only one more thing that I can think of that would have made this t-shirt a bigger hit than it already is. You know how they listed elements 57 through 71 and 89 through 103 below the periodic table? It would have been really, really cool if they decided to do something to homage that very thing in this t-shirt. Here's what I'm thinking. They put Transformer characters in the actual periodic table of this t-shirt, but maybe they could have put a little section below the periodic table on this t-shirt, and they could have put different Transformer-related items in that section. Like different kinds of Venergon, the Star Saber, the Matrix of Leadership, the Dark Star Saber, Cybertron, and Autobot Insignia, Decepticon Insignia, etc. If they did something like that, it would have been a wonderful homage to the original periodic table. But there's nothing we can do to change that, so there's no use ragging about that, but it still would have been extremely cool if they decided to do that. But as a whole, this t-shirt is 100% awesome. Not perfect but still awesome. But should you buy it for yourself? Yes, absolutely you should. This t-shirt is one of the coolest t-shirts in the history of t-shirts. I'll leave a link in the description box below. But if you like this design as much as I do, you should think of getting it on some other kinds of merchandise, because you do have the ability to do that if you so choose. Like you could get it on a v-neck t-shirt instead of a normal t-shirt, you could get it on a long sleeve shirt, a hoodie, a tank top, a mug, or you could just get uh, some good old fashioned wall art. Apparently there's a lot of different stuff that has this periodic table of the Transformers design on it. I guess that proves how cool it really is. But I'm not gonna go through everything that this design was used for, otherwise we'll be here all day. But I'll leave that up to you. Let me know in the comment section below if you can find any other items that this design is printed on. But I know you're probably curious on why I was taking a look at the t-shirt in this weird format instead of in my normal review area. Well, I have my reasons, but I don't want to dive into that too deeply. But you probably think it's because I don't own the t-shirt. But I can assure you, that's not it. I own it. Otherwise, I wouldn't know how cool it really is. But do you want proof that I own it? Voila. See? Here we are in my normal review area, and here is the t-shirt. Insecticon section, Decepticon section, Dinobot section, and Autobot section. There. Are you satisfied? Alrighty then, let's keep moving. Well friends, this pretty much wraps up this video review. Thanks for tuning in. Remember to click that big red subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on a future video. And I really hope you enjoyed this video because this video is one of the biggest projects I've ever done in my whole YouTube career. As you can probably see, this video is incredibly long. And because it's so long, it took a lot of hard work and time to complete. And I'm really excited to finally launch it. So it would mean the world to me if you let me know 
down in the comments what you think of today's video. And what you think of me taking a look at this Transformer-like t-shirt? It's definitely a little bit different than what I normally do on the channel, and it's definitely stepping out of my comfort zone a little, but I'm really glad that I did, because I really enjoyed filming and editing this video. So let me know down in the comments what you thought of me taking a look at this t-shirt, and if I should take a look at something like this again in a future video on the channel. I'll gladly listen to your suggestions if I have the ability to, but I'm a pretty busy beaver, so so no promises. But I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I did filming and editing it. But we ought to end the video off now because I don't have anything else that I need to talk to you about. So, as always, I'm Raccoon Formers, and I will catch you next time. Peace.